it's actually it's fascinating because it almost seems to me when you when we talk about uh, you know the regularity of these spills and these pipelines um, and the kind of just and then we get into fracking other areas that you cover really well the public health and environmental consequences that are occurring on an almost daily basis across America and then you kind of think of a parallel economy of people working at subsistent wages at places like Walmart or off of the books you really have this whole um, right below the radar infrastructure of America that's operating uh, in a completely extractive and exploitative economic framework uh, that barely uh, kind of pun you know punctures the sort of broad media or political bubble around Washington and New York. It's it's really kind of shocking. So I do want to get into uh, uh, this this other component of the uh, the climate change piece. Now, President Obama, um, you know. I know people will probably accuse me. I still attempt, and I like to find positive parts of his record. I watched this speech. Uh, I didn't quite understand what he was saying about Keystone. <laughs> and I've heard people <laughs> interpret what he said really positively, and I've heard other people interpret it really negatively, which, you know, that seems very, that's highly Obama. You know, he's almost like, look, if I uh -huh. wink on the third section of the speech, then that's an indication that I'm concerned about what you're saying, but... I might contradict myself in the next paragraph. Um, sorry, that was a bit of an Obama impression there. But at any rate, uh, I want to get from you first, uh, specifically your take on what he said on Keystone, because I do think that that sort of seems to be like the exemplary climate issue of the moment. Uh, and then more sure. broadly, what, what are the pros and cons of what he's doing on climate and what he's saying about doing on climate? Sure. Uh, Keystone is, it really depends on your context uh, about what he said, because to me, I took it as, uh, which is a lot different than what other people took it as, I took it as an endorsement of the Keystone XL pipeline, and I wrote an article wow. about this because of what I cited before, that's that his uh, State Department's environmental impact, in, environmental impact statement that was done by that API uh, wow. dues-paying member, ERM group, has already come out and said there are not significant climate change impacts of, or there will not be of, of the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, due to that, uh, in Obama's speech, he said that uh, he won't, the pipeline will not be in the national interest if there are uh, net carbon impacts, I think is what he said, of the pipeline. Yeah. Take, <clears throat> put two and two together, and to me that means under his State Department's, a.k.a. The API's, uh, environmental impact statement for the Keystone XL, the pipeline will be approved unless uh, people come out and challenge that uh, study more because that's an official governmental document that he will cite when he goes ahead with uh, either approving or not approving the pipeline. So for me, it was an approval. Um, unless this study can be delegitimized, it's game on for the Keystone XL pipeline's northern half. I mean, in the southern, I, I want to be clear, the southern half was already approved by the right. Obama administration right. via a March 2012 executive order. So when we talk about the Keystone XL pipeline now, we're just talking about the northern half that goes uh, from Alberta and crosses the Canadian-U.S. border down to Cushing, Oklahoma, because the Cushing extension is already 80, over 80% 80 built. Yeah, and I think and President Obama actually campaigned uh, on, on construction sites uh, along uh, that route and bragged about it. So you know, exactly. obviously yeah. that's important. Yeah, he context. made a campaign speech uh, right. the day after that executive order was issued, and he did make it in front of, kind of embarrassingly, in my opinion, in front of the actual pipes that would consist of the southern extension of the pipeline uh, in Cushing, which is known uh, by the industry as the pipeline crossroads of the world. Okay, so and I, I actually remember vividly, I remember watching that speech, and he said, he used the line he used a lot during the campaign, is he said, you know, he was making that we can't just drill our way out of this point, and we'll have an all the above approach, and he said, but, you know, okay. the other side, they would just, you know, they would be trying to, you know, tap for oil in the lawn of the White House, or the, or the uh, lawn of, of, the, of anybody's house, and, and I remember, I, then I was, I looked at Fox Business, and, and Stuart Varney had a guest on, and he said, he's like, he's like, you can drill in my yard if you like. <laughs> and that was, <laughs> and she's like, and, the, and I forget yeah, the woman's name. Fun. She went, she went, heck yeah, she pay me. So, yeah. but but that's and and that's a that's a, a a way of transitioning actually into the other part that I want you to highlight in Obama's mm -hmm. speech that is probably the other really salient and deep criticism, which is the 
even if you were watching it like me and that's great context on Keystone. I thought there was, he said a lot of good things about the seriousness of climate, about pushing for renewables. But even in my less trained eye, I saw a huge uh, cheerleading for natural gas and fracking. Um, am I right to see that? And what's that about? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, uh, you're right on the money on, on uh, everything you just said. Um, you know, I don't want to discount that it's important to talk about climate change because it is. It's uh, mm-hmm. You know, global catastrophe in the making, but I do want to you know, go on the record saying that the speech was a cheerleading of fracking, even though he never used the word fracking in either the speech or the accompanying climate action plan, which is the 20 page document that he was speaking about. And uh, in saying that it was, he said, clean burning natural gas, uh, what he was doing in the climate plan itself was endorsing basically what he's already endorsed uh, both in his first term and into what he campaigned on, and that's uh, an endorsement of every aspect of the shale gas market. That's, you know, it starts with the frac sand itself, uh, where the sand is mined here, actually where I live in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. That sand is used to do the fracking, uh, so he endorsed fracking even though he never used the term. But then he went above and beyond that in the climate action plan and also Uh, endorsed actually the the T. Boone Pickens plan, uh, Uh which is uh, tax credits for uh, 18-wheelers, natural gas vehicles, but, you know, mostly for big trucks. And then above and beyond that, he also endorsed uh, shale gas exports, uh, you know, so so creating an export market for the fracked gas here in the United States, uh, mostly in the Gulf Coast terminals. And then also endorsed in the Climate Action Plan, uh, you know, one more important thing, and that's using the United States State Department as basically a missionary force to teach other countries how to do fracking, and that's through uh, what was created in this first term, the uh, Global Shale Gas Initiative. Which All right, you've convinced me, Steve. I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. Keep going. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> a, yeah, and it, goes, it also goes by the name uh, now the Unconventional Gas uh, Engagement Program. So all of these things were either endorsed in his speech or endorsed uh, in the plan itself that he was talking about in the speech. And that's, you know, above and beyond everything else, if this is fully realized, is both an ecological hazard because of all the you know, the water and air impacts of fracking at frac sites, but also the climate impacts of fracking are just disastrous. Uh, you know, life cycle studies have shown that it can, it's actually probably dirtier than coal as a uh, shown in a study by Cornell University's Bob Howarth and Tony and Graffia in May 2011, and there's been many other studies that have linked uh, you know, fracking to water contamination, and all you need is everyday people's testimonies of how their water is contaminated, but uh, you know, I think it's really important to acknowledge that this is a huge uh, problem in the Climate Action Plan and not something that anyone who has any interest in uh, climate action being taken can can endorse in my opinion so i just want to really highlight that that's fascinating because i you know i'm very familiar with the debate on the ecological impacts of fracking and i'm you know i'm convinced i don't really have a doubt that that's bad for local water and ecology but there still seems to be this kind of uh, can it, it, again there's there's less of a public debate about the notion that well you know natural gas is kind of you know the term bridge fuel is used a lot it's uh-huh. not as dirty uh-huh. as other conventional fuels. So, in again, in the same sort of pragmatic perspective, uh, we do need to sort of think about that in a climate context. And you're saying that, that that's almost analogous to talking about, like, clean coal. That's a scientific misnomer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. it really is. And uh, the whole bridge fuel concept, even, even you know, uh, not just scientists have written about it, but a guy like uh, you know, Joe Rahm writes a lot about it, too, uh, how it's not a bridge fuel to anything, but a bridge to nowhere, and that's a bridge to, or a bridge to climate catastrophe. And uh, you know, and I also want to, because you talked about coal, you broached the topic. I want to uh, say that the speech was actually more of an endorsement of coal than people may have realized, and that's because of what's going on domestically with the coal industry and globally with the coal industry. The United States is increasingly not a Coal, uh, it doesn't emit, it doesn't produce coal as much in the power plants. It doesn't use it anymore. It's using natural gas because of the fracking boom. And 
uh, coal is still going to be produced under the Climate Action Plan, and it's going to be exported to the global market as it already is in the Powder River Basin, especially in the Northwest. Right. Uh, and you know, that globally, uh, you know, climate climate change is a global problem that's uh, very uh, troubling. And uh, you know, although he did talk about you know natural gas, clean burning natural gas power plants, there's still going to be coal power plants that are being built around the world uh, under the plan. It was just kind of a you know, there's an error by omission. By not talking about it doesn't mean that it's not there, but it is there. Uh, and a lot of people in the Northwest are fighting back against it, but uh, it wasn't really that the whole coal exports wasn't addressed in the speech, and I think that was definitely for a reason. I think it was to kind of greenwash what's, what's actually happening in the United States. And even to the extent to which there are maybe genuine positive steps on other technologies and other policy moves in the context of this speech, I think you're, you know, nailing something else that's really important right there, which is that fundamentally, obviously, climate and global warming are global issues. So even a strategy that weans one country off of something like coal that still is an export base built around it is obviously not going to be fundamentally uh, solving the problem. Um, but at any rate, Steve, it's been excellent talking with you. I feel like this has given uh, – it's a little uh, a little discouraging on the Obama speech front, but it sounds right to me. And and, and that's really interesting, too, that, that basically that you, he's setting the stage for validating a decision based off of a study that's been outsourced to just sort of a greenwashing uh, stamp consulting firm, essentially. So that's that's interesting. Yep. Um, all right. Well, great. Look, uh, everybody should check out Steve's work at the Smog blog. I think that, you know, if you want to understand any of this stuff, climate, fracking, corporate control of the policymaking process, you got to look at Steve's work. It's great having you on, Steve, and I uh, hope to talk to you again soon.